I just spent $3,000 and three days in Beverly Hills at a millionaire mastermind meeting. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my top three key takeaways. And if you want all the detailed notes as well, everything I wrote down, you can get those at the end of the video as well. But I want to just get into the juicy nuggets here, the top three key takeaways, the top three strategies, tactics, perspectives that I'm going to be holding on dearly to in 2024 and beyond. And my hopes is that by the end of this video or even throughout this video, you're gonna get some massive key takeaways as well that you'll be able to implement your own business and or help your clients implement so that they can get faster results in whatever you're helping them to achieve. Uh, to be clear, this mastermind was specifically for online coaches, consultants, agency owners. Everyone there was doing around $100,000 a month. Some people were doing a lot less, like 30 grand a month. Some people were doing a lot more, like 300 grand plus a month. And, you know, there was just a big mix of the styles and strategies and tactics that everyone was using. So it was a really, really cool group to be a part of. And this is just the first things first. I know I said I'm going to give you three key takeaways, but I'm going to give you a bonus one right off the bat because I'm really generous like that. The first one is that you've got to surround yourself with people who are successful in the field that you want to be successful in. I cannot stress that enough. In fact, I won't even bother because there's, I literally can't stress it enough. So fuck it. There's no point. Just go and hang out with successful people in the field that you want to be successful in and just notice how it changes you. You will become a different person surrounding yourself with successful people. It is the ultimate hack. You don't even have to try. In fact, you could not resist it even if you wanted to. Like if you go and hang out with a big group of losers for three days, even if you try with all your might to not become a loser, by the end of the three days, you'll be a little bit or a lot more like those losers that you're hanging around. And the same goes in the opposite direction of hanging around a bunch of successful people. Even if you try not to become more successful, you will. Humans are social animals like this. We're social creatures, we're pack animals, and we become like the people we hang around, whether we like it or not. So that is the first massive bonus tip. If you want to become successful, find the people who are already doing the thing that you want to do, who are much further up the road than you, or even if they're a couple steps up the road, go hang out with them and notice how much better of a person it makes you in that field. And that goes for all fields, whether it's business or fitness or relationships or spirituality, whatever. Just find the people and go hang out with them. Ultimate, ultimate hack. And, and I remember growing up as a kid, we used to skateboard on the street all the time. And all the kids on our street were like pretty much the same level. We could all kick flip and heel flip and, and pop shove it and do 180s and 360s or whatever. But then this one kid, he moved up the street, uh, sorry, uh, up maybe like uh, five streets away, which was like 10 minutes away, which is like pretty far when you're like a little 10 year old. He's like, wow, he's moving up to that street. And we knew that street 10 minutes away, those were where the older kids would skateboard and they were much better. They could do like 360 flips and they could do like crooked grinds and they could like do like half pipe stuff. And they were like doing like, uh, like stairs, like handrails and they were like really good. And we knew that, wow, by our friend moving up and living on their street, he was gonna become so much better than us. We just knew it. And I remember one of like the leaders of our, our pack was gonna say like, just watch where he's gonna be in, in a couple of years, he's gonna be so. And sure enough, he became so much better than us at skateboarding. Not because he skateboarded more, but just because he was skateboarding with better people than him. So you gotta do that if you wanna be successful in business. Hang out with people in person. Zoom calls are one thing, the Zoom calls are like, you know, it's, it's what's the comparison? Hanging out on Zoom is kind of like, um, man, what, what's the best comparison here? It's like driving a virtual car. It's like playing Mario Kart instead of driving a freaking Tesla on the road or driving a Lamborghini or driving whatever your favorite car is on the actual road. It's just, it's a video game. It's so different. So get there, get in person, hang out with people. That's the first thing, but that's a bonus, doesn't even count. The real first thing, the real first key takeaway occurred within the first 30 minutes of the mastermind. And I am, when I go to these events, my favorite thing to do is socialize. I love to just talk to the people who are there. I feel like I might have like ADHD or something where I can't just like sit down and watch somebody talk for a while. I get really antsy and bored and I want to go do stuff. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to move. And I wasn't even caffeinated. I was just chilling. But I just start, I'm like, why would I sit there and watch someone talk and I could just do that on YouTube? Like I can just go for a walk with someone on YouTube. But whatever. I just said, Ted, shut up and just take notes. So he went up there, the, the, the leader of the mastermind, Dan, and he drew this, he drew a triangle and everyone's like, ooh, the Illuminati. But then he filled it out with notes like this. And at the top, you see the word how. And underneath that, you see hands. Underneath that, you see head. Underneath that, you see heart. Really, the two words I want you to remember though is heart at the bottom and how at the top. And he explained how despite everyone having access to similar information out there on the internet, despite us all being at that same mastermind event, despite all 
of us having access to the same sort of coaches and access to you know similar levels of capital that we can use to, to buy things and access things. Some of us still get dramatically different results than other people. And I see this all the time with my clients. Like some clients, they come in there, they're like, they just get after it and they, and they crush it no matter what. Even, even under like poor conditions, poor circumstances, they still crush it, they make a ton of money. Whereas other clients come in, Things are pretty good for them already. Like they have definitely like a, uh, they have definitely have like an upper hand in terms of like their current situation and everything. But they just don't really do anything. Nothing really works for them. And so he talked about this as well. He said like the reason that is is because all the tactics and strategies and instructions and tutorials that all lives at the top of the pyramid. That's the how, and that's the least important thing. Just like in a food pyramid, like up here you got like your freaking down here you got all the fruit, right? And then up here you got like your magic mushrooms and supplements and crap, right? That's like the least important thing. The most important thing is the fruit down here. And so in the pyramids he drew out, he's like the heart is the most important thing. And a lot of people don't have heart. They don't actually love what they do. And when you don't love what you do, you're not gonna implement on the how. And if you do implement on the how, you're not gonna implement it on it very well. And if the how ever doesn't work, you're just gonna give up and quit because you don't have the heart. So he goes into detail on like how the heart is the most important thing. And if you wanna succeed, you've gotta have heart. And when you go watch any Michael Jordan documentary, I was just talking about this with Sam Ovens like a few days after or a few days before the mastermind, I was chilling with Sam at school. And Sam turned to me and he's like, do you know why Michael Jordan was successful? And I already knew the answer because I'd watched Sam's videos and he talked about this, but I kind of like sat and thought about it for a few seconds. And I was like, cause he loves the game. Like he's obsessed, he loves it. And then Sam brings me over to his desk and hits play on a documentary, or a compilation of a, some documentaries that he'd been editing of Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan says the same thing. He's like, I love the game of basketball. I love it so much that I do anything for it. It's all I think about. And that's why I'm successful. Michael Jordan, his own words. Like, the reason I'm so good at basketball is because I love the game. And so this it is pretty obvious. Like if someone doesn't love it, Steve Jobs said the same thing. He's like, if you don't love your business, if you don't love your, your work, then naturally you're just gonna give up when things get tough and things do get tough. But you have to love it. You have to be obsessed enough so that when things do get tough, you push through anyway and you don't quit and you figure it out. So that was the very first key takeaway is understanding that like the reason people fail is not because of a lack of how. The, the instruction manual, the step-by-step -step guides are infinite on the internet. Like new ones get produced every single day. Dozens of them get put out every single day on YouTube. Here's how to succeed with dropshipping. Here's how to succeed as an online coach. Here's how to succeed as an online uh, content creator. Here's how to succeed as a course creator. There's so many guides. And, and, and when I have coaching calls with clients, I give them more or less the same instructions. I give them all the same instructions. I'm like, here's exactly what to do step by step. And then some of them implement and crush it. And some of them don't implement. Or if they do implement, they implement it kind of half-assed and they don't, they don't crush it. And then I, like, I speak with them like a month later and I'm like, what have you been doing? And they're like, oh, kind of got distracted with this other thing. It's like, if you love something, if you're obsessed with something enough, you would not get distracted with something else. You would just get it done because you love it so much. It's what you want to do. You're not trying to get away from it. It's not a means to an end. You just love it. You love the process. So that was the first key takeaway. If you're, if you're struggling to get results, ask yourself, ask your heart, go into your heart and be like, do, ask yourself, do I love this? Do I love this enough to be obsessed with it? Do I love this enough to spend money on it? Do I love this enough to travel the world to, to get access to cool people who are also doing it? Do I love this enough to read books on it? Do I love this enough to attend conferences? Do I love this enough to, to try and try and try and fail? Do I love this enough so that when I'm on my deathbed, I'm not gonna regret any time spent on it, even if it's a failure. Ask yourself that. For me and my business, I absolutely do love it like that. I'm willing to go all in on it. It's all I wanna do. It's all I wanna spend my money on. And I'm okay with, I, if I died tomorrow, knowing that like my life was spent how it's been spent, I'd be super happy. Cause I get to do what I love every single freaking day. So that's the first thing, the four H's in the pyramid. And again, if you want this like drawing with all the little notes, detailing it in more detail, um, I'll show you how to get that at the end of this video. Now, a second bonus key takeaway here is when I say like, okay, at the, at the top you have the how and at the bottom you have the heart, that's not really practical advice. It's just like a perspective. But I'm gonna give you some practical advice here, some actual tactical, tangible, actionable item here that you can implement after this video or tomorrow or whenever. And that is something I learned at the retreat, something I learned at this mastermind. It's called breath work. And a breath work is something I've done lots of before. I've done lots of long breath holds. I've held my breath for six minutes before. In fact, I even have a strike on YouTube because I uploaded that video and YouTube took it down because it said it was very unsafe. So now my strike, or my YouTube account has the strike and I upload like one more thing like that. My account can get taken down. But I, I love breath work and I've done all sorts of types of breath work, whether it's breath holds or, or box breathing or Wim Hof breathing or pranayama breathing, all sorts of breath work I've done. But I've never done breath work 
like the breath work we did at the room. What we did was we got, went to a big room, and I wish we did this outside because we did this like in an air conditioned room. Probably wasn't the best environment for this, but it worked anyway. So environment aside, this can still work. You could probably do this at the freaking airport. What we did was we all laid down on a yoga mat on our backs, closed our eyes, and for 45 minutes, we did one type of breathing, one type of breathing only. All we did was inhale through our mouth and exhale through our mouth. Inhale through our mouth and exhale through our mouth with no pausing in between. So it wasn't inhale, hold, exhale, hold, which I like to do. But this was just in, out. In, out, like this. <sighs> Fucking intense for 45 minutes. And we did this two days in a row. We did it on the second day of the retreat and we did it on the third day of the retreat. And on both occasions, everybody who attended had incredible insights had incredible heart opening moments a lot of people broke into tears uncontrollably a lot of people broke into laughter uncontrollably a lot of people said that it was more valuable than any therapy they've ever had and they've been going to therapy for years with multiple therapists a lot of people said that they relieved years of pent-up trauma a lot of people just had breakthroughs of what they could do in their business like clear crystal clear insights because they tapped into the heart and they knew what they needed to do. They, they, they not knew what they needed to do. They knew what they wanted to do. That's the big difference. The, the heart is all about wants. The heart doesn't feel like it needs anything. The heart just wants things. It's, it's the desire center. And when you find out what you really, really, really freaking want, there are no excuses. Excuses come when you see things that you think you need to do or you should do, but oh, all these but, but, buts come up, right? The heart is just like, I want that. And breathwork connects you to what you truly want. So if you're unclear of what you want in life, I recommend two tactical actions you can take right now. Number one, do the breath work. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Do it for 30, 45 minutes if you can. Ideally, you do it guided. Ideally, you have a friend come over and guide you or you ask your mom or dad or brother or sister or, or something. Or maybe there's like an online guide as well. I'm not sure, but we had, we were guided. And the reason I recommend guided breath work is because you're probably gonna like forget to breathe sometimes. A lot of people forgot, myself included, because your mind just goes elsewhere. So it helps to be reminded to come back to the breath and keep the cadence full circle. In, out, in, out, in, out. That's the first tip to find out what you really want. And the second, which sounds weird because you're literally just breathing, but it clears the mind, it gets you tapped into that. The second thing though, is write a list of everything you don't want and then ask yourself, what is the opposite? So if you don't want to be poor, you want to be rich. If you don't want to be alone, you want to be together, whether that's community or with a loving partner. If you don't want to be um, disrespected, then you want to be respected. If you don't want to be bored, then you want to be excited. Right? If you don't want to be fat, then you want to be just write a list. Of, it, it, it's very easy to come up with a list of things that you don't want. I ask people all the time what they want, and most people struggle to give me a very good answer. But everyone's very good at coming up with what they don't want. Start that. Get the momentum going. List of what you don't want, and then boom, what do you do? Want? What you do want? Very easy that way. Okay, so that all right there was the very first key takeaway. Tap into the heart. What do you actually freaking want? That makes everything else so much easier. Second key takeaway of the event. This one is gonna seem super obvious and you're gonna be like, Ted, that is a pretty dumb key takeaway. I was hoping for something better from you. And you might even be shocked that I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say right now because I've been on YouTube for like 17 years or something. Like I've been on YouTube since high school and I'm 33 now. But I'll dive into this one because there's a lot to unpack here. And this key takeaway is going to be my sole focus for 2024 and potentially 2025 as well. It'll be a while, get mastered. That is the content game, video content specifically. Video content is lacking, has been lacking, has been past tense, has been lacking in my business for a while. In fact, most people who find me on the internet don't even know that I have a business. They just see my like fruitarian stuff, they see my fitness stuff. Most people don't even know that, I, that I'm doing 100K a year, or sorry, 100K a month with my business because I don't make much video content about it, but I do post, I do do a lot of written stuff on it on Instagram and Facebook, but I'm not known as like the business guy on YouTube at all yet. And it's fascinating because I probably put out more business content than I have fruit and fitness content in my life. It's just all been behind the scenes with clients. So the content game needs to get some, a lot more TLC going forward. And for that, I'm gonna be hiring a filmer and I'm gonna be hiring an editor potentially multiple editors if necessary, and potentially multiple filmers if necessary. But I wanna get my content game up. And so going forward for the first time ever, I'm gonna be taking some profits from the company, from the business, 
my personal profits and just putting it back into filming and editing, filming and editing, filming and editing, filming and editing, filming and editing. So you're gonna see a lot more of that from me going forward. And everybody at the event, everybody at the mastermind agreed that that's what they need to do as well. Like everybody was suffering from shit content. There's only a couple people there who had mastered the content game, which was astounding. But the good news is, the fact that all of us there were, are still able to generate like a ton of income without having that great of content it goes to show that there's a lot more to the game than just content. However, all the people who did have really good content were able to make so much money with ease. And it just comes down to audience. It comes down to traffic, it comes down to eyeballs. Like the more eyeballs you have, the easier it is to sell more stuff. And good video content just helps you get more eyeballs. So the key takeaway for me is just, I gotta take content seriously. I gotta take video content seriously but I don't want it to come from a place of I need to do this. I want it to come from a place of I want to do this. And so I know that I love to do things, certain things with other people and not do it all on my own. And creating content is one of those things. I love creating content with people. I used to shoot models. I would find like really pretty girls on Instagram, send them a DM, be like, hey, you want to do a video shoot? And they'd either say yeah or no. Most of them said no or they'd just ignore me. But a few of them said yeah. And so we'd meet up, we'd plan out this shoot, and we'd shoot it together, it was super fun. There'd be like some acting involved, some like dancing involved. And then once we did the shoot together, I'd go home and I'd edit it, I'd send it to them, and we'd like you know, work together on the edit a little bit if necessary. And then I'd have this finished piece of content I was very, very proud of. So that was super, super fun, super, super fulfilling. And going forward in 2024, I wanna get back to that feeling of like, this is so fun, I just wanna make content for content's sake. And that's what I used to do in the Fruitarian game. I built a name for myself in the Fruitarian space, racking up, hundreds of thousands of views, just as being an athlete who eats fruit. And I was just making content for content's sake. I just loved making content, it was super, super fun. It was showing me like traveling around the world. And a lot of people know me from like those Thailand days. I was just in California last week and I was walking through a parking lot and someone goes like, Ted Carr. I don't know who he was. He knew me from YouTube and I was like, do you know me from the Thailand days? And he's like, yeah, yeah, the Thailand days when he had a shaved head. So content works incredibly well if done consistently. So I wanna get back to that. And the key for that is just put someone in charge, put someone in charge of it and do it from a place of having fun. Find a way to make it fun. That's going to be key. The next key takeaway le leads into, or actually just kind of piggybacks off that second key takeaway, which is when I say like put someone in charge of it, hire a filmer and hire an editor, this brings me to the third key takeaway, which is something that I'm going to be helping a lot of people with in 2020. And that is putting together a team, hiring more people. I currently have 20 people on my team, 21 people on my team. And I think I had one of the biggest teams at the event, at the mastermind. And I noticed something about all the people who had a very small team. Everyone who had a very small team seemed to be complaining about how much shit that they had to do that they didn't want to do. Or they seemed to be complaining or about, or not necessarily complaining, but just like confessing struggles that they were having, which in my mind could easily be mitigated or completely avoided, completely eliminated if they just had a team member doing that thing. So for example, sales calls. I watched this one guy's calendar and he showed me his calendar. It was completely booked. Monday to Friday, all these sales calls. And he's the CEO. And I'm like, dude, why don't you just hire a sales rep? And he's like, oh, because nobody could close them. Like I can close them. I'm like, that's bullshit. I used to think the same thing. I took all the sales calls in my company. Now I haven't touched a sales call in like six months, almost a year now it's been since I touched a sales call. Completely delegated it. And there's like a hundred other things in my company, in my business that I've completely delegated or just gotten rid of. Uh, but the team part is huge. And so I remember when I was, I remember when I was in elementary school, I was playing soccer a lot and I love soccer, football as some people call it. And I remember going into my yearbook at the end of the year and looking at, this might sound weird, but it's what I did. I would just look at all the kids in the school, their pictures. And for some reason, the older kids, it's probably natural, but the older kids seemed like the cool kids, some of them. And so what I would do is I would just take out my, my pen and I would circle all the coolest kids who I thought would also be good at soccer. And I was just putting together like my dream team. I'm like, if I, could, if I could get these people on the same team, we could create an amazing soccer team together. And I would just go through and circle all these different faces. And it was like fantasy league in my head, right? We could get that guy, we could get that guy, if we could get that guy, oh, we'd be so good, nobody could beat us. And now that's how I approach my business. I'm like, oh, if we could just like hire that person, if we could hire someone for that role, if we could hire someone for that role, that'd be amazing. We have an incredible team. And that's what we have now. We have an incredible team. We have such an incredible team that I don't really do much in the company except for occasionally make videos like this, which is super rare. Occasionally I'll work with some clients, also super rare. 
and I pretty much just make posts on Instagram, make posts on Facebook, but even that's gonna get delegated out soon. So I really don't do a whole lot because of the team. I'm like kind of like a team captain, but, but it's hard to even call me a team captain because a team captain's like playing on the field typically as much as the other players. I'm more of like the team coach. I'm like the team coach who comes on the field occasionally and plays as well when and if needed because I built a team around me. So 2024, I want that team to grow. In 2024, I want to make a lot more hires. 2024, I probably want to get our team from 20 people as it is now to 30, maybe even 40 people. I just really want to grow this business. And actually early January, so like next month, I'm getting 10 of our team members to come together here in Mexico. We're gonna have a team retreat. And we're just gonna optimize the business together for a full week. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Super, super excited for that. But I remember watching on uh, planet Earth, BBC or something, it showed how cheetahs would hunt. And it said how cheetahs used to just hunt solo. They would just find their prey and they would sprint it down and try to catch it and eat it. And the cheetah wouldn't share with any other cheetah, it would just do its thing solo. And then I watched this clip and it was like, talking about the evolution of cheetahs, and it was like, now cheetahs have learned to hunt in packs. Cheetahs used to hunt alone until now. I remember getting chills over my body. Whoa, packs now. It showed how these four cheetahs would team up and this way they would save a lot of energy and they would get a kill every single time. One cheetah would go straight, the other two cheetahs would come in like this, and the other cheetah would come in from the front. And it's like, there's no way you're gonna escape four freaking cheetahs. And they would just share the kills. And they would get meals all the time. Instead of having to like go days without eating, they could just like eat every day if they wanted. They learned to team up. They learned to team up. And that's what I think a lot of humans have to do. They need to learn to team up. They need to get rid of this notion of solopreneurship, which I used to fall victim to. I thought being a solopreneur was the way. I was like, oh, it's just gonna be me. I can do everything. Now I'm like, I just want to do the things I want to do and everything else delegate. It's freaking awesome. Because when you, when you hire a team, like, yeah, okay, you have to spend the time finding somebody and hiring them and then training them. That takes a lot of time and effort and it might not pay off. But if you can spend that time, let's just say it's 10 to 20 hours of finding, hiring and training somebody. You spend that 20 hours once, you're now freed up forever. You're freed up forever. People ask me, Dad, how do you have so much free time? How come you're like traveling the world and not really working that much? It's because I don't need to do much. Everybody is in their position. I've spent the many, many, many hours doing the finding and the hiring and the training. And soon I'm gonna delegate that position so somebody else can do the finding and the hiring and the training, which is already the case now in certain departments. So the team, the team is so key. And, and the reason this is a key takeaway for me is because I realized at that mastermind, I was one of the only people with a big team. And I was seeing everybody else complain about shit. And I was like, I don't have any of these complaints. My plate is so f empty, my plate is so free. My calendar is so empty, so free, it's awesome. So that was the third key takeaway. Now, if you want my, my, cause my team member was also there. In fact, I was the only person at that mastermind who brought a team member. I might've been the only person at the retreat to have a team member to bring. <laughs> no, everyone had like some team members, like a VA or something, but um, yeah, I brought, brought uh, our head of sales with me. And uh, Benny, his name is and he also took notes. So if you want his notes, send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook with the word Benny, B-E-N-N-Y, and I'll send you his notes because his notes and his key takeaways are probably gonna be completely different from my own. And if you want my notes, if you want my entire notepad of notes and key takeaways, I will type them up for you so you can actually read them. If you want all of these key takeaways from the event, check the Description below, scroll down, and you should see a place to grab them there. There are a ton, and they are worth, these notes are gonna be worth millions to me. So enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, much love, ciao for now, and expect to see a lot more from me in 2024. Bye.